So this little campsite I'm sitting in here is just in my backyard. I'm not sure whether to blame the pandemic or Pinterest, but somehow my wife and I got it in our head that we needed a glamping tent. So in May of this year, we ordered from White Duck Outdoors a 12 by 14 foot wall tent that you see behind me. It arrived in about August and we used it on one family camping trip where we took it and set it up. Since then, it's been set up in our backyard and I will show you how we've got it tricked out inside. But lately, as the weather has turned a little bit cold and it's emphasized the point by snowing a little bit in the last few minutes, it gets a little cold to sleep in at night. I just saw a mosquito fly by, so I'll be glad to see them go tomorrow when we get our first hard frost. What this video is primarily about is setting up and installing a Winterwell wood stove designed for this kind of camping tent. Let me take you and show you inside. Have a bit of a look outside first. We've been really happy with the build quality of this white duck tent. It's got really nice features, you know, Velcro around the windows that roll up, uh, shock cords on the guy wires to make the tent not flap too much in heavy wind. You know, really nice solid front tent flap with the double layer and these clip buckles. You know, good quality YKK zippers. And then coming inside, you can see what we've got set up in here. Now everything you see here is really a Facebook marketplace find from the uh, Persian rug on the floor to the queen size log bed, to the little wardrobe and dresser, uh, all varied from $200 to free on Facebook marketplace. Now the Hudson's Bay blanket is something we already had, nice wool blanket. Uh, pretty comfy to sleep in but as i said it's getting a little cold so next step is we want to add a wood stove in this corner here let's go inside unbox these winter well stove components and have a look at what we've got okay so what i have here is a winter well 1g woodlander cook camping stove and all the accessories for it uh chimney pipe comes with the stove i have a flange for where the stove pipe goes through the roof of the tent i have a heat protective chimney i think it's a double wall or triple wall chimney as well as a fireproof floor mat to protect the floor of the tent it says right on it uh, don't use a cutter to open the box so i'll try to do it somewhat carefully now there's that one this one Open, open, open. Right. So, obviously the most fun part is the stove. Some sort of great packing material. Looks like it just looks out of the box. Predictably heavy, so I can put it down on the floor. All right. The rest of what's in the box is just packing material. We have instructions. Looks like the legs just fold out. Kind of spring loaded legs. Racks. Turn this so you can see it. We have inside here a door that flips open. Seems to have traveled well. I don't know what that is. We'll figure that out when we read the instructions. The three and a half inch chimney pipe is just packed inside the stove. This one's got the damper in it. This one's got a screen of some kind in it. I'll figure that out. That just might be the, uh, oh, there we go, spark arrestor. And a bunch of pipe sections. So, 
It's like it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so this is obviously a great. It goes in the bottom of the stove. To allow for airflow under the wood. You get your vent control there. Small window. Now they make a version of this that has a big window in the side. And I thought about it. It would be kind of cool to have the firelight in the tent, but all of the reviews I read said that, you know, after your first use, the window is completely covered with soot anyway, so it sort of kills the point unless you clean the window every time you use it, which I know I'm not going to do, so we won't bother with that approach. So then the roof flashing kit, pretty straightforward, a little flange that connects to the tent to make sure you get everything nice and weatherproof because you do have to cut a hole in the roof of your tent to hook up the stove which will be scary I'm sure and there's some instructions with this as well box more instructions actually it looks like this is the same flyer I guess the all the various winter well stuff. Now what I have here is kind of cool. Couldn't resist adding this on. This is a little water tank that sits on top of the stove. Wraps, looks like it wraps around the chimney somehow. So chimney pipe sits in there. Except it doesn't fit around the chimney. Did I buy the wrong one? Water tank. Huh. That's it. Oh, two and a half inch pipe diameter. So I'll have to send this one back and get something different. Well, that's disappointing. It's obviously the completely wrong size for the wrong size stove. So I bought the wrong water tank. First disappointment. I think the floor mat should be pretty straightforward. Big, some sort of fireproof material, fiberglass with silicone coating, mat that will go underneath, and then to go through the wall of the tent, we've got this double wall. Where's a triple wall? It's actually a triple wall. This outer dimension has this other thing has two walls, and then that will go through this flange. So that flange will fit around this thing, hopefully. We'll sort that out. Looks looks like it will. This goes through the roof of the tent. So we protect it from the heat in a couple of different ways. Pretty straightforward, other than buying the wrong size water tank. And I think that with this going through the tent, we actually don't need this spark arrestor, but I'll read the rules that come with and we'll see. All right, pretty straightforward. I guess we go out and install it. It's gonna go there. And then pop through the roof, flange there. Not too bad. That makes sense. And then these ones go the other side. There we go. Spark arrestor. So I did read the instructions, and what happens is this goes on to go through the roof, and then you add additional sections. 
outside and you do use the spark arrestor to get you outside the tent and then you're supposed to attach guy wires to these little things to hold the chimney in windy conditions so I'll have to come up with some guy wires now the scary part cutting a hole in my tent now there is a well to attach inside the tent so that even after you do cut a hole in the tent when it's not in use you can close the flap so the rain doesn't come in and I do have a rain fly ordered for this but they were back ordered hey buddy how you doing you can you see what I'm up to this is Salem all right so checking the diameter of the pipe that has to go through the tent against these little circles that are drawn on it it looks like the inner circle is the one I'm after and I am hopeful that this is the right tool for the job we shall see I think I will start in the middle I'll cut a little X and then oh yeah that's not so bad it says to stay at least an eighth of an inch from those lines yeah I mean that squeezes through there perfectly next we have to get the flange installed so the flange has a series of wing bolts I guess you'd call them Alright, we got holes. Alright, go outside. Push this. We'll put the one the ring on. Put like this on the outside then. This was outside. The wing nuts are on the inside. Alright, that's easy. I'll come up here then. Feels like I'm biting you got it. You bite it? Feels like it. Yep. Boom. Looks good. Alright, good. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the one diametrically opposite. Okay. There we go. Yep. And there's the plate. Yep, it's definitely biting. Got it. Yep, beautiful. Okay, right, so that's got the little inner stove pipe looking good. So we're great. This is just a little tool for cleaning out ashes. I think you can just stay right there. And we'll put on the outer pipes. You might be thinking, fire starters and a lighter, come on, where's, where's the flint and steel? But uh, think about it. Does this look like the tent of somebody who's trying to hone his bushcraft skills? I don't think so. I should have stuck a piece of paper or something up the flue to make sure it was drawing. I think it's going to start. So the frost is going to come and kill these bugs for us tonight. So we can put away the screen. And man, I can already feel it warming up in here. Oh yeah, this is going to work. Hmm. So we've used this little stove for a few nights now and we really like it. The more we use it, the more we like it. It will run really hot. You've got really excellent temperature control with this valve on the front. You open that vent wide open and this thing will roar. It will get absolutely red hot. Stop it down, it'll burn more controlled, nice and low and slow. 
Uh, we had lots of heat to boil the coffee pot on the stove. Um, we slept one night where it got down to about, oh, 20 degrees, 22, I think, Fahrenheit. So what's that, minus five, minus six Celsius. Uh, pretty cold, but got up a few times in the night, stoked the fire. It was certainly warm enough to sleep comfortably in here with the big blankets. So honestly, we're thrilled with this little stove. Packs up nice and small, easy to transport, easy to set up, great temperature control, nice looking. Definitely give it a thumbs up. So that's it for this video. As always, thanks for watching.